Good morning, folks. We've got a little bit of space weather, a little more to watch for. We'll see three stories building on past news and one on the half harmonic of the disaster cycle. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun was relatively more quiet. Minor motions around the corona, filament releases are small and off the sides. Northern coronal hole is in full view, and in the solar wind, yesterday we had said that impact was expected. NOAA predicted KP5 low-level storm. The impact occurred a few hours later than expected and was slightly weaker as well. No geomagnetic storms from them, but today, NOAA has upped the ante to KP6, level 2 geomagnetic storm forecast due to the arrival of faster solar wind. We'll keep an eye on the solar wind again today and the bright active regions as they turn through, with others cresting into view. Quick note here as a six-pointer struck Greece this morning, at least one was killed and numerous buildings were damaged. Reports still coming in. Up next, this one hits the outer reach of the solar system, focusing on the molecular outflows continuing past where the solar wind tends to slow down. Helps us cut down the other explanations for the nearby anomalous dust population from the September 20th show. Shouldn't be seeing more material inside than they figured. Should be seeing less, unless there's other contributions. Quick slide over to a nifty little isotope proof that the complete ocean shutdown during Heinrich 1 wasn't exactly as most scientists believed, including the flow directions in the deep. By the way, the Heinrich Event 1 couples with the half-cycle magnetic event Helena Pauli 18,000 years ago. Up next, a look aiming at expanding the Arctic heating influence over the globe, and while it attempts to do so within the paradigm of global warming, they need to reach high into the sky to create that extra forcing, and up there, that's where the sun takes over. So while these authors lack the upper forcing tools in their toolbox during the explanation phase of their paper, they can still recognize how this energy and perturbation is working the tropical regions from way up in the polar zone. If that doesn't make you think of the recent solar forcing of Jupiter climate story through Aurora, I don't know what will, where that polar destabilization gradually propagates down through lower latitudes. Wouldn't it be cool if they actually said something close to that for the Earth system? How about like this? Brand new paper coming round specifically from the geomagnetic side and hitting on how that same auroral influence begins at the poles and then begins expanding outward and down to lower latitudes. That's the expanding circle you see here over time, which is how this would look from the north looking down. Good luck blaming that on carbon dioxide. We greatly appreciate your support. Check out our climate playlist for more on solar forcing. Check out the disaster series playlist for more on the Heinrich events and the full 12,000 year cycles. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.